So this video is going to cover all the different ways of finding the slope of a line. First of all, though, I want to explain exactly what slope is. So the slope of a line basically measures how steep a line is. Okay, so it measures how steep a line is. That's what you're going to get. You're going to get a value and it's a measurement of how steep the line is. So that being said, then the higher the number, the steeper the line. Okay, so the higher the number, the steeper the line. So also it's worth noting then, if you have a positive number, you're going to have um, a line that goes upwards, like an uphill. And if you have a negative slope, you're going to have a line that goes downwards, like going downhill. All right. So bearing in mind that the higher the number, the steeper the line, if you have a flat line, what do you think the slope of that line is going to be? And it is, of course, going to be zero. There's no steepness to that line if it's absolutely flat. OK. All right. So that's the background of exactly what it is that we are calculating. There are now three ways in which we can find the slope. And the first way is using the formula. OK, so good news is this formula, again, is in your log tables um, and you can just fill in all your values and you can find the value for the slope. M is the letter we usually always use for slope. OK, so to find the slope, you would follow this formula. What you need then to be able to use the formula are just two points. OK, so if you're given two points um, as bits of information in the question, then you can always just use the formula to find the slope. And that would be the easiest thing to do. So let's have a few examples here. So as with all the coordinate geometry formula, once you've got the formula written down for yourself, the first thing you should always do is label your points x1, y1 and x2, y2. OK, so now we're going to fill it in and find the slope or m. So following the formula exactly, the first thing we've got to do is fill in for y2. And y2, we can see, is 3. And remembering, whatever we sub in, we keep brackets around. Then we have a minus, and then we have y1. And y1 is the value 2. So sub in 2, keep brackets around it. Put your division line, just like they have in the formula, and then underneath x2, which in this case is 4. So sub in 4 minus, so put the minus, and then x1 is 1, so subbing in 1, okay? So we get then on the top 3 take away 2, which is 1, and then don't forget your line, 4 minus 1 is 3, so the slope of that line is 1 third. And we do tend to leave it in fraction form, often with slope you will get a fraction, all right? So let's try another one. So if C is 3 minus 1 and D is the point 5, 2, find the slope of the line C, D. OK, pause the video and have a go at this. So first thing we do is, of course, label our points X1, Y1, X2, Y2. And now we are going to sub them in. So M equals, follow the formula exactly, Y2 is first. So Y2 in this case is 2, sub it in, keep brackets minus y1. Now y1 in this case is a negative 1, so keep that negative 1 in brackets. Put your division line and then we have x2 which is 5 minus, following that formula, x1 is 3. Put it in brackets. Okay, so doing the calculation on the top we have 2 minus negative 1. OK, now, if you do get confused with your negative numbers a little bit or you do want just to be fully accurate, so you want to do a double check, by all means, type that in exactly as you see that on the calculator. Bracket two, bracket, take away, open the bracket again, negative one, close the bracket and you'll get your answer. But when you're subtracting a negative, it's like adding. So that's the same as two plus one. Two minus minus one is like two plus one. OK. Uh, and of course, that will work out to be 3 on the top. And 5 minus 3, that one's straightforward enough, is 2. So 3 over 2 is the slope. OK, next question. If E is minus 6, 1, and F is the point 4 minus 2, find the slope uh, of the line EF. OK, more negatives here, so just do be careful. Make sure whatever you're subbing in, keep brackets around it. Pause the video, see how you get on with this question. 
The first thing we do is we label our points x1, y1, x2, y2. Okay, and now we're going to sub in m equals y2 is the first value we're subbing in. So y2, look over here, is minus 2. So put it in brackets. Subtract. Don't forget to follow the formula exactly. Then we have y1. y1 is here. Happens to be 1. So put it in brackets. Then do your division line. And underneath we have x2. x2 is 4. And then we have subtract. And then we have x1. And x1 in this case is negative 6. Okay, doing the calculation on the top, and again, you can just type that into the calculator if you want to just make sure that you're going to get the accurate answer here, if you're a little bit unsure of your neg negative number work. Um, but minus 2 minus 1 is minus 3, over 4 take away negative 6. Remember what I said before, 4 minus minus 6 is the same as 4 plus 6. When you're taking away a negative, it's like adding. So we have minus 3 on the top and 4 plus 6 is 10 on the bottom. So minus 3 over 10 is the slope of that line. And so last question then on using the formula to find the slope. Uh, if g is the point minus 1 minus 2 and h is the point 4 minus 1, find the slope of the line gh. So I have the formula written out for myself uh, straight away already, but that's one of the first things you're going to do is write down the correct formula that you're going to use. Um, so pause the video then and see how you get on with this final example. So I'm going to label my points, of course, x1, y1, x2, y2. And now I'm going to sub it in. So m equals y2, in this case is negative 1, so put it in brackets, subtract, and then y1 in this case is minus 2, so put it in brackets. And then put your division line. x2 on the bottom is 4. Subtract. And x1 is negative 1. Okay, lots of minuses here. So again, use your calculator to help you. Just do the top bit first. If you type into the calculator bracket, negative 1 bracket, subtract, open the bracket again, negative 2, close the bracket, okay? If you want to make sure that you're fully accurate. Um, if you're doing it in your head, it, it is, of course, negative 1, subtract negative 2. So minus minus 2, remember we said before, is the same as adding. So that's the same as minus 1, add 2 okay, on the top, and minus 1 add 2, or 2 take away 1, is 1, okay? And again, we have the same thing happening on the bottom, 4 take away negative 1, 4 minus minus 1, minus minus 1 is the same as add 1, so 4 add 1 is 5, so 1 fifth is the slope of that line. Okay, so as I said before, there are three ways to find the slope, and we've already worked with the first one. The first one, and probably the easiest way, is to use the formula. But of course you have to have two points to be able to do that. So that's the first way you can find the slope. The second way that you can find the slope is by doing the rise over the run, okay? Now, the rise over the run, I'm going to explain that in a little bit, but when you would use the rise of the over the run is if you have a graph okay so in other words the line is drawn out for you and if the line is drawn out for you we might be able to just see quite clearly the rise over the run and that is what will tell us what the slope is right so let's have a little a look at an example um, of that kind of type okay so here is a graph drawn for us we have the line in front of us and from this we'll be able to figure out the slope so as I said, the slope is the rise over the run. So when we analyze what the rise and the run are, look at your two points here, A and B, and analyze this rise and this run. Okay, if you were to make like a right angle triangle here, connecting those two points, that vertical height and that horizontal length that represents the rise and that represents the run. So the rise over the run in that case, well, what's the rise? We can see there uh, one, two, three, three over. The run is going from four to minus two or minus two to four. So one, two, three, four, five, six. 
So the slope is 3 over 6, of course, which can be simplified to a half. So the slope of that line is a half. Okay, let's take a look at this example. So we have two lines here, A and B, and they're intersecting there at the point 5, 2. Um, let's say we're just looking for the slope of line A, okay? So here, what you need to be careful of is that if we're going to be analyzing rise over run, we've got to pick two clear points on the line where we can clearly see what the vertical height is and the horizontal length. Like, for example, if I pick that point there and say that point there, I don't know what that horizontal length is because although it looks like that is cutting that line right at the halfway point, I couldn't be exactly sure. So I'm better off taking, say, this point here, which is right at the corner, and this point here, which is right at the corner, Okay, so I know there are two very clear points um, on my line and then analyzing the rise, which is two units, over the run, which is one unit. So rise over run is two over one, which is two. So the slope of line A is two. Now, what about the slope of line B? Now, one thing you have to be careful of here is the line B immediately we can see is a downward sloping line. And if you remember at the very start, I discussed that if you have a slope that's going downhill, we know straight away it's going to be a minus, okay? So that's one of the things that you have to remember with your rise over run. You have to remember to put in the minus um, if you can spot that it's a downhill line, okay? So straight away, that's the first thing I see. And now again, I'm going to analyze rise over run. So again, that wouldn't be a good point to pick because it's right in the middle there. I don't know exactly if it is halfway. That's not a good point to pick because again, it's not an exact point. There is a nice clear point I could use though. And there is a nice clear point I could use. So rise over run. Okay, so that's two is the rise over the run, which is four, gives me a slope of minus two over four, which of course simplifies to minus a half. Okay, try this example. Pause the video here, take a good look at the graph and try and identify the slope. So, straight away we'll spot that it's going uphill, so we know it's going to be a positive slope. And then you want to pick two points. So I'm going to pick this one here and this one here. Now you may have picked another one. You may have picked, for example, this one and this one down here. It shouldn't matter. As long as you're picking nice, clear points, we should still be getting the same slope, whichever two points we pick. So as I said, I'm going to pick this one and this one and the rise I can see there is um, technically, of course, six because look, it's going from zero to six on the y-axis and between here and here, it is a gap of between two and four. So say six over two, which of course is three. You might have just looked at it in terms of the squares and the units, and in which case you would have got three over one, which of course is also perfectly fine because it's still going to give you the same proportion uh, as the rise over the run. So the slope either way for this is a positive three. Okay, last example. Take a good look at this graph and this line. Pause the video and find the slope of this line. Okay, so have you spotted straight away that it is obviously going downhill? So immediately we know it's got to be a negative slope. So get that down straight away and then pick two clear points. I'm gonna pick this nice clear point here and this nice clear point here, both of them going through the corners there, which makes it nice and clear to spot that the rise is three units over the run, which is two. So minus three over two 
is the slope of that line. Okay, so to recap again then, as I said before, we have three ways to find the slope. The first one's using the formula, but you'd need two points. The second option is to use rise over run, but you'd need to have the graph or the line drawn for you. And the third and final way of finding the slope of a line is to use y equals mx plus c. Okay, now I'm going to explain this in a lot more detail, so don't worry. But this we would use if you are given the equation of the line. Now, the equation of the line is basically then your function of the line and it's always usually got maybe a something y something x and a constant in it okay with your equal sign so it's easy to spot that you've been given the equation of the line and if you have the equation of the line and you can get it in this layout okay now that's pretty important that you get it in this layout, but I'm going to go through lots of examples there to explain to you uh, all the different ways you might be given an equation and how to get it exactly in this format. But once you've got it in this format, you just pull out the coefficient of x, or in other words, the number before the x. Whatever the number is that's before the x, once you've got it set up in this layout, that is what will tell you the slope. All right, so I know it looks quite tricky, but we'll do plenty of examples now for question th for option three. This is the trickiest one of all of them. Uh, so if you have two points or you're given the graph drawn for you, you're better off with going either with option one or option two. But if all the information that you are given is the equation of the line and you need to pull the slope from that for some reason, then you're going to have to use this third option here. OK, so let's have a little play around with this so we can fully understand exactly what we've got to do. OK, so we're going to start off with some easy ones and we'll gradually get harder and harder. OK, so take the equation of the line y equals 3x plus 5. All right. And um, so as I said, the equation of a line will always be usually with a something x, something y and equals in there, maybe a number as well. Um, that is always the function. So the function or the equation of the line in this case is y equals 3x plus 5 and you're asked to find the slope. Okay, so this is already set up in the format we want. As I said, y equals mx plus c. By the way, y equals mx plus c, that layout there is given to you in the log tables. Okay, so you, you'll be able to remember quite clearly what that layout is. And that's the layout you need to be able to pull out the slope. So this is already in that layout quite nicely. So straight away then I can pull out the slope. It's the coefficient of x or the number before the x. So in this case, the slope of that line is 3. All right, let's try another one. y equals 2x minus 3. Find the slope of that line for me. Pause the video. See what you get. Again, that's quite nicely in the form y equals mx plus c. So I can pull the coefficient of x straight away um, or the number before the x and spot that it's 2. So the slope of that line is 2. All right. OK, next question. What about the equation of the line y equals a half x plus 4? So again, it's in the form y equals mx plus c quite nicely. And so straight away, I can pull the coefficient of x here or the number before the x. And I'm getting a half. All right, let's try a more trickier example. So find the slope of this line. So y equals mx plus c is our little bit of help from our log tables here. What would the slope of this line be? Pause the video and have a go if you think you, you know what you might do. Otherwise, listen on and I'll explain in this particular scenario what we'd have to do. So it is set up quite nicely, but we just don't quite have a y equals. We have a two y equals. Now, that's a problem. It has to be exactly in the, this form, y equals something x 
plus something. Okay, so straight away, I'm going to have to get rid of that 2y and just have y on its own. So because it's an equation, what I do to one side, I must do to the other side, if you remember that with your equation work. Uh, or also another way of looking at it is whatever I do to one term, as long as I do the same thing to the, all the other terms in the equation, I will keep the equation balanced. So if I have a 2y here, uh, in other words, the 2 is attached, that means it's being multiplied. The way to get rid of the multiply by 2 would be to divide by 2. But of course, if I divide that term by 2, I've got to divide that term by 2 and that one. Everything has to be divided by 2, the left-hand side and everything on the right-hand side. So that would then give me the 1y, which is what I need. And then 8x divided by 2 is 4x and 6 divided by 2 is 3. Now we have it quite nicely in the form y equals mx plus c. And I can pull out my slope, the coefficient of x or the number before the x, which is Four. So the slope of the equation of that line is 4. Okay, try this example. Uh, pause the video and work out what the slope of this line is. So again, we need it in the form y equals mx plus c. And I don't quite have that. I have a 3y and I want y in its own. So I'm going to divide by 3, divide by 3. Everything needs to be divided by 3 to keep it balanced. And I get y in its own now. Minus 12x divided by 3 is minus 4x. And 3 divided by 3 is 1. And of course, then I can pull out the slope. The coefficient of x is minus 4. Try this one. What is the slope of this line? So we need y equals mx plus c here. I don't quite have that. I have a plus 5 here on the left hand side and I need y on its own. So in order to get rid of a plus 5, I'm going to take away 5 from that side, which means I'm going to take away 5 from that side. And that will give me 3x minus 5. And there I can pull out the coefficient of x is 3. So therefore the slope of the line is 3. Okay, so try this question here y plus 2x equals 10, find the slope of that line. Press pause and see how you get on. Okay, so again, we need it in the form y equals mx plus c. I don't quite have that. I don't have the y on its own. So um, in order to get rid of this plus 2x, I'm going to minus 2x from the left-hand side. And of course, if I minus 2x from the left-hand side, I got to subtract 2x from the right-hand side. So I'm left with 10 minus 2x. And now remember, you're pulling the coefficient of x, okay, which happens to be over here. Don't just follow the order. It's got to be the number before the x, and the number before the x in this case is minus 2. So the slope of that line is minus 2. Okay, try this one. Find the slope of this line. Press pause, see how you get on. So we need it in the form y equals mx plus c, which means I need the y on its own. In order to get the y on its own, I'm going to need to add 6 to both sides. That would give me that. And then I would have to take away the 3x from both sides, which would give me this. And the slope of the line, therefore, the coefficient of x, the number before the x, is minus 3. Okay, try this one, press pause, see how you get on, find the slope of this line. So we have y equals mx plus c, of course, and I need to get the y in its own. Now, first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the plus 2 by taking away 2 from both sides. That would give me this. Then if I take away the 5x from both sides, that would leave me with a minus y, though, still, minus 2 minus 5x. And if I want to change that sign, then I've got to change every sign in the equation. Or another way of looking at it is multiply the whole equation by minus 1. So change that sign, change that sign, change that sign. Well, if I change one of the signs, one of the terms, uh, one of the signs of the terms in the equation, you just got to do it to everything in the equation and then you keep it balanced. So I do, I want to make sure it's a positive y equals, that's very important. So change that sign, then you must change that sign and that sign. So I've got y equals 2 plus 5x and now I can pull out the slope 
is the coefficient of x or the number for the x, which is 5. OK, try the slope. Uh, try finding the slope of this line. 4x minus 2y plus 10 equals 0. Pause the video, see how you get on. So again, we need it in the form y equals mx plus c. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take away the 10 from both sides. That will leave me with 4x minus 2y equals minus 10. Then I'm going to take away the 4x from both sides. That leaves me with minus 2y equals minus 10 minus 4x. And now to get rid of, rid of that minus 2, that is being multiplied to the y, by the way, because it's attached to the y. Then to get rid of something that's being multiplied, with a multiply by minus 2, I will divide by minus 2. If I do that to that term, I've got to do it to all the terms in the equation to keep the equation balanced. And I end up with minus 10 divided by minus 2, which is a positive 5, and minus 4x divided by minus 2, which is a positive 2x. So now the slope of that line, or the number before the x, is 2. OK, try 2x plus 3y minus 8 equals 0. Find the slope of that line. Press pause, see how you get on with this one. So again, we need it in the form y equals mx plus c. So I'm going to add 8 to both sides first. That will give me 2x plus 3y equals 8. Then I'm going to take away the 2x. Uh, that gives me 3y equals 8 minus 2x. And now, of course, to get the y on its own, I'm going to have to divide by 3. So divide everything by 3. And that gives me 8 over 3. Nothing more you can do with that. And minus 2x over 3. Or another way you can look at that, it's the same as minus 2 thirds x, by the way. Right, so minus 2x over 3 is the same as minus 2 thirds x. So what's the number before the x or the coefficient of x? It is a negative 2 thirds. All right, and often you will end up with some fractions. So don't think you've gone wrong. It doesn't always work out for you nice and evenly at all. We regularly have slopes as fractions. So in that case, it's minus 2 thirds. OK, final example and final question for you. Press pause and see how you get on with this one. Find the slope of that line. So we need to get it in the form y equals mx plus c. I'm going to minus 9 from both sides first. That will give me 3x minus 4y equals minus 9. Take away 3x then on both sides. I get minus 4y is equal to minus 9 minus 3x. And then to get rid of this minus 4 that's being multiplied to the y, I'll divide by minus 4, which means I divide that by minus 4 and divide that by minus 4. That gives me the y on its own. Minus 9 over minus 4, well, a minus divided by a minus is positive, so 9 over 4 I'm just going to keep because um, I can't really simplify that anymore. And a minus 3 divided by minus 4, again, will give you a positive, a minus divided by a minus. But again, I'll still be left with 3x over 4. And of course, another way of looking at 3x over 4 is 3 quarters x. And so the number before the x, or the coefficient of x, is 3 quarters. Therefore, the slope of the line is 3 quarters.